Hello my friends and welcome to Youth Potential, a channel dedicated to helping young people with mental health problems. I have two books available, 102 Distraction Techniques and Self-Harm to Self-Harmony. Both of these books are only available on Amazon. Thank you very much for watching this video. Hello my friends, Scott here representing Youth Potential. It's been a while, it's been a long time since I've created a video for my channel and uh, delivered some sort of message to you guys. Um, Thank you for being patient. I know a lot of you do follow me on Instagram, so you kind of know sort of what I've been up to. Um, I took a little break from making videos just because I didn't feel like I could make anything decent. I didn't feel that I could, you know, nothing worth saying, basically. Um, but I think it was more of a case of I just didn't feel confident enough to go in front of a camera and talk to people. Um, didn't feel like I could give any value to anyone. So without further ado, this uh, return to work video, if you could call it, it's going to be about my uh, my recent autism diagnosis. If uh, any of you have been following me on Instagram recently, you know that I was recently diagnosed with autism. Um, for a bit of context, uh, I'm 30 years old. If you guys haven't don't know anything about my video, uh, my channel, or any, anything about me, so it's taken a bit of time to get there. And what I'm going to do with you today is just give it a little bit of back info on how I got my diagnosis. So, I must have been somewhere in the middle of last year. Um, it was suggested to me that I seek an autism uh, assessment. Just, I didn't really, I, ne I never really understood much about autism or ASD, as it's formally called nowadays. Um, so I didn't really know anything of it. But after it was suggested to me, I did some research and, you know, you, you look up all the behaviours and the symptoms and that kind of thing and um, and then it starts to click. You start to think, OK, OK, there's quite a lot of things there that I can relate to. I could, it, it makes sense to me. I, I kind of get it. You know, you look at these behaviours and think, that is me. Now, there's plenty of... My, my only understanding at that point of, of uh, autism and ASD is that there are generally kind of two, you know, it, sorry, it's a spectrum and you can be anywhere on the spectrum. So what I did was speak to my care coordinator about it and they suggested that I go to my GP for a referral. So I did that um, and then from there it just kind of was a case of filling out forms chasing up appointments and finding what the hell's going on with everything because you know i got the referral from my gp getting letters through filling out forms like questionnaires all questionnaires about like behavior and mentality sending it off and then just having to wait i mean they even sent me a letter saying look it could be 12 to 18 months before you get a formal assessment and I knew that anyway, so people had told me that before, so it wasn't too much of a shock. So time goes by, blah, 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 and I have to start chasing it. Well, my mum, bless her, starts chasing it up for me. And then eventually I get a letter through, probably just a couple of months ago, saying that um, we are going to go to the next stage of your uh, referral. So obviously I'd filled out the questionnaires and they were happy looking at those answers that a referral was something that was needed because obviously if you fill out these questionnaires and you don't meet any criteria at all they're not going to take it further they're not going to waste their time and resources so um got let through and the next thing they wanted to do is actually speak to my mum about my really early childhood sort of like around five years old obviously i'm not going to remember that much around that time but they expect my mum to so they did like an hour to two hour um, appointment with her over the phone. And bless her, my mum couldn't really remember, couldn't really answer a lot of questions because she couldn't really remember a lot. So that didn't really help my uh, potential diagnosis. And I'll explain that a bit more in a minute. So she did that. And then I got a um, another letter saying that we're gonna ha you're going to have your uh, appointment, your, your assessment on this date. So that must have been what, about 
uh, at the beginning of September this year, I think that was. So I got it. Um, and then they called me up saying that, right, you need to get some documents, some documentation over to us via email by the end of the day to make sure um, that your appointment can, can still go ahead. So I did that. And then the following week came, got to the appointment. Two hours beforehand, I got a phone call saying, oh no, we're going to move it till the same time next week. I'm like, oh, you did. I did everything you asked me to, right? You wanted all of these documents. I got them to you and it still wasn't good enough and you decided to leave it till the last minute to tell me. Now, if you know anything about anyone with autism, last minute changes or cancellations, anything like that does not go down well. Um, because to me, I just don't understand why you would say do this and then this will happen. And then that doesn't work out like that. I know in reality, you can't just expect everything to work perfectly all the time. But it's frustrating when it feels like someone's in control of it and they've still let something adverse happen. Anyway, cut to the chase. The following week happened and then I go to do a Microsoft Teams meeting with a... A psychiatrist who or psychologist whatever who was going to be assessing me so I was sitting in the room face to face through a screen which made it a little bit less awkward for me and a little less anxiety inducing and I had my mum to the left of me um, and then he was asking me questions for about 90 minutes and there was a lot of questions about how I react or cope with so certain social situations um, there wasn't any questions about like sensory related things which I really expected because I know that sensory issues can be a real strong part of people with ASD but he didn't ask me any of that I don't know maybe he was um, confined to a certain amount of time because it, the way it finishes was kind of abrupt um, but it was, a, it was a really good he was really understanding and a lot of the questions he asked me I had to say to him look I don't understand what you're saying. Can, do you mind rewording it so that I can understand? And I mean, that in itself is a common uh, behavior of ASD or symptom of ASD. I, sometimes I just have to get people to reword things because I can't see punctuation in their sentences or or um, or the way they use their tone. Just It just confuses me. I don't understand the questions. But he was polite, he was really good, and although I was sitting there like a nervous wreck, I had like my arm around this arm, and I'm sitting there like really, really anxious. Assessments always makes always make me anxious. It's horrible. I think it's just the fact that I view them as like you know patient and um, professional, and I'm the one sitting there being examined like an animal. That's what. That's what an assessment feels like to me. Anyway, we got to the end of the assessment and he says to says to me, right, we're going to talk to you now about what I think. I was like, okay. And he says, from talking to your mum about your early childhood, I wasn't able to, to kind of get a clear picture as to whether he thought I had ASD or not. Uh, but based upon my behaviours and my answers in the assessment, he said that he says he said that I have I'm ASD, so I'm on the autism spectrum disorder. And to be honest, like having that diagnosis really hasn't changed me. I don't feel shitty about it. I don't feel like disappointed. To be honest, it's kind of a relief because it's something that I've been thinking about for a long time and bothering me, you know, not having a formal diagnosis because then you think, am I, aren't I, am I, aren't I? You just don't know. Uh, but having that clarified for me, it just helps me understand myself better. And, you know, learning about yourself is very, very important. You know, the more you know about yourself, the more that you can adapt to whatever life throws at you, basically. Um, so, yeah, that's. I did have all these notes written out for this, but I've just kind of not really paid attention, <laughs> paid attention to any of them. But, yeah, the point is, like, I'm absolutely fine with being... Uh, someone who lives with ASD and yeah it just it gives me something to to learn about another mental health condition to create content for on here and um, my IG 
Um, in terms of my next book, From Relapse to Redemption, I'm at about 50,000 words at the moment. Um, I have been struggling to kind of feel motivated to want to actually write on it, but yesterday I wrote some more in it and now I'm starting to pick up that momentum again. Um, I think I've got about three, three more chapters that I need to finish before I can start going through the draft and then fine tuning it all. But yeah, anyway, guys. Um, so yeah, you're going to see more about autism across across this channel and my um, Instagram. So please, if you know anyone who lives with autism, get them to follow me on IG um, and subscribe to the channel. It would mean a lot to me. Honestly, I don't earn. I haven't earned a penny yet, even though I've been monetized for like the last thousand subscribers i've um nothing i've had not a single penny's gone into my account and as you know i'm trying to work towards that massive goal of having a self-harm support center so yeah guys if you've um live with asd please leave a comment below tell me what your experiences are like tell me how you got to your diagnosis or whatever it'd be great cool well i can safely say i've already got uh plans for another video so watch this space it's good to be back guys, thank you very much for tuning in, all the best.